Need for Speed Unbound is without question the best Need for Speed game in years. In fact, I'd go as far as saying that Criterion's latest entry in the series is the best since its heyday in the early 2000s. An open world racer that allows you to participate in a multitude of events, though not on the same level of Forza Horizon 5, and really get the feel of cars that you choose to drive. What's not to enjoy? It's a game that is both tough to master as it is easy to get started, but is it one that you'll be coming back to after the initial rush of fun wears off my name is curtis from sports gamers online and here is our review of need for speed unbound Driving is the name of the game in Need for Speed Unbound, and it can be a bit of a mixed bag. Turning feels a little twitchy, and drifting can feel like your car has no real weight, making it tough to get the hang of. There are certain elements of realism behind the wheel of your cars, but there's enough arcade feeling that you're either going to love or hate how cars drive. I'm on the enjoyment side of the fence. Some critics will complain about the speed of the cars and say that it doesn't feel like a Need for Speed game. To that, I say you're wrong. While yes, some of the cars aren't very fast, they're usually the cheapest and lowest level cars in the game. As you upgrade your vehicles and buy or unlock better ones, you immediately feel how different each car is. In time, you'll find yourself flying past the competition and reaching high speeds with no problem. With that said, winning races won't come as easy as you expect. Between AI racers and the police, you'll really have to earn every victory. Sure, in some races you'll find yourself cruising to the win without problem, others will have you fighting for every open inch on the road, AI will try to run you off, cops will try to take you out, and you'll have to handle this while focusing on quick turns that sometimes come out of nowhere during a race. Everything in Need for Speed Unbound focuses on a cash-based economy. There's no rep that you earn or lose this time around instead there's day and night cycles with various events that are either free to enter or cost money the events with buy-ins are the most rewarding but obviously come with the higher risk you can even make side bets with ai races over finishing positions if you want to gamble for a little bit more cash there are 143 cars in the game at launch all of which can be unlocked in some way shape or form and then upgraded how you see fit you can upgrade the engines exhaust and almost anything you can think of aesthetically you can create your own paint and wrap schemes or download designs shared by other players myself i'm not the most designed inclined person so I just utilize the great looks others have made. From a boat's perspective, you only get two real options, story and online. The story is the primary place to play, especially when you're just getting started. You take the role of a former foster kid that becomes a garage apprentice. After spending months of working on a car, you get betrayed by someone you believed was a close friend. The rest of the story is spent going through events to get to the ultimate goal of a major racing event. It's not the deepest story, or and some of the voice acting feels lazy, but it's also not as try hard as some of the past Need for Speed campaigns. One thing I really enjoyed throughout the story mode is that wins weren't necessary in order to advance. While you obviously get more money the better you do, it's about earning just enough to get to the next event and advance the story. It becomes a grind at times, especially when your starter car gets stolen and you're racing in the worst car ever, but it makes the rewards so much more impactful as you progress. Online play is an open world environment where you head into a server with other players on various platforms, PC, PlayStation, or Xbox, and enjoy a number of racing events. There are the longest jump and speed challenges scattered throughout Lakeshore amongst others. You can also race with other players online, though it can be tedious to set up as you have to go to a meetup location and hope that others in the game choose to accept. The first thing anyone who plays or even looks at Need for Speed Unbound will notice its design choice. While the cars and environments look realistic, the character models are cell shaded which was certainly a choice. But to be honest, I love it. It makes the game feel different and gives it a style that no one else is doing in the racing space. It also doesn't go overboard with the anime look that could have made the game unplayable. When driving, you have a number of camera angles to choose from. Unfortunately, an interior camera angle isn't one of them. I love to play my racing games from inside the driver's seat, and Need for Speed Unbound not allowing this is really disappointing. There are various elements to the game's presentation that may seem over the top to some, but it fits the grand scheme of what the design team was going for. Things like neon lines circling tires when you do a burnout, or wings coming out of the side of the vehicle when you go airborne, it all just fits and really looks nice in game. With vehicles, they all look great and identical to the real world counterpart. Even the 
sounds are pretty spot on for the most part. Overall, I think Criterion hit a home run by messing the shell shaded design with a realistic feel. It's a great template that could and should be built upon moving forward. For a series that is nearly 30 years old, Need for Speed has seen plenty of ups and downs through its time. While there has been a number of poor outings over the last 15 to 20 years, Need for Speed Unbound feels like a game that has set the stage for another resurgence in the series. It's not the greatest Need for Speed ever, nor is it the best arcade racer of the last couple of years. What it is, however, is a fun game that shows promise for what Need for Speed can be for the future generations. Some might not like where the series appears to be heading, but I'm not one of them. In fact, I haven't been this excited about the future of Need for Speed in a long, long time. If you guys like the content we do here on Sports Gamers Online, then hit that like button and subscribe to SGO right now. And if you want the most out of your SGO experience, then join SGO Insider.